Okay, we're going to take a look at industrialization uh, and review the industrial revolution and working conditions in factories at the time. Uh, so a textile is a woven cloth, usually made for clothing. Uh, interchangeable parts now are identical parts of a tool or instrument that are made by a machine. Uh, the interchangeable parts are going to make production of goods a lot more faster and more efficient. Okay, British inventors began to make textiles with machines. A British textile worker, Samuel Slater, set up a textile factory in Rhode Island in 1790. Okay, this was the beginning of the Industrial Revolution in the United States. The thing about Samuel Slater is uh, he came from Britain and it was illegal to take this idea of building this machine, uh, the blueprint, anywhere. It was be punishable by death. He memorized how to build this machine, take a look at it, memorized how to build it, sailed across the Atlantic Ocean, and rebuilt one in the United States. Was he a hero or a traitor? So you can say, take a look at it from the British perspective uh, or for the American perspective. Now, a question would be, why would the British not want their ideas being spread out elsewhere? Your, uh, the idea would be uh, monopoly over top of um, uh, goods and services. Okay, Francis Lowell. In 1814, Francis Lowell opened a textile factory in Massachusetts. As a result, the U.S. no longer had to buy finished textile products from Europe. So building your own product at home makes things cheaper and puts people to work in your own country. And then Eli Whitney invented interchangeable parts. So products could now be put together and repaired easily are easier than if uh, they were completely handmade. So for example, if you were building a gun, instead of having to hand make every single gun, which would take a lot of time and you need certain people with skills to make those, you would have interchangeable parts. Uh, some uh, parts of the gun would be produced by uh, this and some would be here and it would be mass produced. And if something went wrong with your gun uh, after you buy it, you can go and get a part to fix it. Or like today, like an automobile. You need new tires or new brake pads or something. Those are called interchangeable parts. Imagine if every car was manufactured individually. Um, they would be very, very expensive. Okay, but factory workers, uh, women were paid half as much as men. Working hours were long and wages were low. For example, you worked a 12 to 15 hour work days. And, uh, there were, at this time, there were no laws protecting workers, and we'll talk about labor unions in this class. Okay, earnings, men made about $5 a week. Women would make about $2 per week. Children uh, were sometimes forced to work, um, and they had would only make a dollar a week. Uh, cities developed as farmers and immigrants took available factory jobs. So you, at this time, you see a lot of people moving from the farms into the cities to work in factories. And then we'll talk about a major invention that's going to really change um, uh, slavery in this country, too, uh, the cotton gin. So we're we'll going to look at the, uh, examine the impact of the cotton gin on American society. So which of the following inventions has had the largest impact on American society? We'll talk about this in class. Here are your choices, the refrigerator, the telephone, television, computer, train, car, plane, or other. Which one would you choose? I always, we'll do this in class to see who picks uh, which invention uh, has the most impact on American society. Well, I could argue this, at least at this time period recovering, it was difficult to make a profit from cotton because cotton seeds were uh, removed by hand. So slavery was actually on a decline in the United States. Here's a cotton ball. You would have to pick out the... Uh, the uh, seeds and th stems of the cotton. So it took one person an entire day to clean one pound of cotton. Not very efficient. This is how cotton grows. All right, therefore, Eli Whitney uh, invented the cotton gin in 1793, and this sped up the process majorly. And now you have a demand for cotton and a demand for slaves to work. There are some videos we'll watch in class. All right, Whitney uh, applied for a patent on the cotton gin. 
All right, a patent is a copyright of an invention. So, like, for example, the iPhone has a patent, and no one can copy the iPhone or something like that. So people ignored patents and built their own. Does that happen? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, even till today. Whitney never became wealthy from this invention. Okay, a plantation. Owners began to earn a lot of money growing cotton. This caused farmers to increase their dependency on slave labor. Native American tribes such as the Cherokee and Creek were forced onto reservations so that farms would have more land to grow cotton. So as our nation starts to expand west, uh, Native Americans are forced to move off these lands and these the new lands here moving in from uh, states on the coast over to Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. Uh, as these states develop, Native Americans are forced further and further west to make room for land to grow cotton. And we'll talk about that when we cover Andrew Jackson's presidency.